this meeting of uh, Community District 115 Board of Education to order. Can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Schreiber? Mrs. Snowblin? Here. Mr. Mormon? Here. Mr. Markison? Here. Mr. Powers? Here. Mrs. Sorensen? Here. Mr. Black? Here. My president's report tonight is quite short. Uh, firstly, I want to say Happy New Year uh, to everyone. From the district's perspective, it's uh, been somewhat of a challenging start to 2015. Uh, as uh, many of you have been associated with the district any time probably realize it's very unusual for us to have snow days, uh, to have two days off in a row uh, right before finals is uh, certainly unusual. And they aren't really snow days anymore. It's temperature days. <laughs> temperature days. Well, listen, uh, I just wanted to comment, particularly for the benefit of our parental community. Uh, these are never easy decisions. Uh, thank God they're not mine or the board's decisions. They're Mr. Simic and the staff's decisions. But I know there's a considerable amount uh, that goes into them, uh, and it's something that uh, requires a lot of thought and collaboration and data gathering and many times it's a no-win situation. Uh, one of our surrounding districts I know uh, decided to have school indeed on that second day, that Thursday, and lo and behold they had a fire alarm go off and you know this forces kids in gym class to, to go outside in shorts and t-shirts uh, for a period of time. Thank God in that case it was a false alarm and it didn't require any extended outdoor exposure, but there's no place in the school that can accommodate all of our students in the event of some kind of unforeseen emergency that could arise. So these are the kinds of things that go into that decision making and uh, I, I would just ask the community to understand we can't make all the people happy all the time, uh, but we always keep the safety of our constituencies and particularly our students as foremost in, in these decisions. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Simic and the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. S uh, Mr. Black, and I will hand off to Mr. Rogers to begin the superintendent's report with the principal's report. Thank you, Mr. Simic, and I think on behalf of all of our students uh, and staff, it is good to be back in school. I think everybody enjoyed a one-day reprieve before finals, but day two, I think we were ready to get back into action. So it's good to be back. Um, I have to say that uh, our teachers and students have been hard at work preparing for finals being ready to go. We started our first day of finals today. Uh, things went, you know, very smoothly and uh, things are going well. Um, one of the things that uh, we're providing the board with is a preview of our summer school catalog, which has been completed and completed ahead of schedule. I want to thank uh, Jim Sullivan, who's our assistant principal, for leading the efforts and doing a nice job building out the program. Some of the things that I would like to highlight is that we are featuring more offerings this year for students in the summer. Uh, many of the opportunities are enrichment activities, um, but I think there's an also another important component um, that you'll see in terms of support, and I think support some of the district initiatives and part of our strategic plan. Uh, in particular, I'd like to point out our math ladders course, and our math ladders course helps students reach their mathematical goals. We have an incoming AAA ladder for students who have taken algebra and need that extra support when they want to accelerate and take the most rigorous curriculum. And we also have a trigonometry ladder. We have a Career Connections pilot program for juniors and seniors, which provides a four-week project-based internship experience. Students have real-world experiences on specific career clusters, such as business, engineering, technology, and public administration. So some exciting offerings for our students in the summer of 2015. At our next board meeting, we're going to present an update regarding our regular curricular offerings for the 2015-2016 school year. On February 3rd, we're going to hold our second annual E-Day. And E stands for entertainment, excitement, emotional wellness, uh, lots of great things, and certainly enjoy the journey. Um, it's a regular school day with shortened periods. During the middle of the day, we take time to come together as a community. There will be a dramatic performance from an outside theater group that I think all students and faculty will enjoy. We'll host a number of, of workshops, um, and the goal is to break up the winter doldrums and really live our ideals of value of community and balance in students' lives. So um, we're excited about that day, and plans are well underway. Um, and so last thing I just say is you know, we are wrapping up the, this week and at the end of this week we've got uh, a big athletic matchup so after we uh, work hard and, and focus on our priorities of academics uh, timing couldn't be better for our sports teams we're going to have a big sports day 
Uh, our senior swim team will take on Stevenson High School, one of our, our top rivals, followed by a 7 p.m. varsity basketball game where the undefeated scouts will play the unbeaten Stevenson Patriots. So we're very excited about that game. Uh, expect probably a sellout. So if you want to get there, get there early. It should be very exciting. And I think uh, school spirit is an all-time high. So on that note, school spirit and leadership, I'd like to pass it over to our student council president, Luke Gibson. Thank you, everyone, for having me, and Happy New Year. Um, the biggest event uh, on the calendar at our school right now is Turnabout, which is going to occur on January 24th. It's our winter formal where the girls ask uh, the guys. Um, kind of an overarching theme that has been um, eminent in student council has been making a lot of changes this year. And so in Turnabout, we unfortunately had to fire our DJ, who we've had for about I think five to ten years um, and decided to hire one of our own. His name is Jordan Wessel. Uh, so hopefully he can bring a new spice to the dance. And on top of that we ordered some new light speakers and even a smoke and laser show that is going to occur during the dance. Um, hopefully that hopefully that'll keep everyone at the dance for a little bit longer. Um, on top of that we also are bringing Susie's Swirl which is a uh, frozen yogurt restaurant in Lake Bluff. They're going to cater three different flavors, um, two dairy options and one non-dairy option, along with three toppings for, um, for every student. There will be plenty for everyone. Um, tickets are online until Wednesday, January 14th. And um, based on how many tickets we sell, you know, we'll notify Susie Swirl as to how many cups to order and stuff like that. Uh, we also raised the prices from $20 to $25, so essentially um, for the girls who will be buying two tickets, it's a $10 increase. Uh, this is to compensate for, for the additional um, DJs and smoke laser show type things uh, so that we can still donate money to Greenwood Elementary in Waukegan, which is, remains our, our charity that you know, we'll be donating to throughout the rest of the year. Um, a couple smaller things. Uh, about a month and a half ago, we reached out to every club and even teachers in our in our school and ask them if they would like any help with with charities or you know any school related events that we can help out with um, you know trying to get student council to be a more renowned club at our school um, so immediately a uh, teacher at our school Miss Levinson who's a Spanish teacher emailed us back and said that she needed help with a coat drive for a school in Chicago so we said we're happy to help um, there are about 427 kids at the school so our goal is um, is to organize all the homerooms third period to bring to bring in coats. Every student who brings in a coat will receive a raffle ticket, where three prizes will be raffled off. Uh, and on top of that, um, the classroom who raises the most coats is going to receive like a Chipotle lunch or, or bagels, something like that. Um, uh, another couple small things that uh, student council did that weren't as well known throughout the school. Uh, was adopt a family. Each class uh, cabinet adopted their own family for Christmas. Uh, usually about five people. It's you know we buy gifts for the kids, um, and we all went down. About 25 kids from you know each cabinet went down to Walmart, and we bought gifts for you know over 25 kids. Um, so it was really an incredible experience. Um, also, some of you may heard of the Johnson family. Uh, Mr. Johnson, who's a teacher at at our school in the special ed department um, has been through unthinkable challenges throughout the past five to ten years. Um, one of his daughters who has cancer right now is going through chemotherapy and is at home and we reached out to his family asking you know in what way can we help her you know make this challenge more more comfortable if, if that. Um, so me and Miss Harmson went out to GameStop and we bought her an Xbox and three games uh, you know for her to keep busy throughout this tough time. Um, Mr. Harmson, who's Ms. Harmson's wife, or <laughs> husband, excuse me, um, he had heard of a wrestler on the Lake Forest wrestling team who, um, who was clearly having financial problems and, and was wearing the same clothes to school each day and, and reached out to Mrs. Harmson and student council. So Ms. Harmson was nice enough to go out to Walmart, you know, after receiving his clothes sizes and buying him shirts, sweatshirts, shorts, pants, stuff like that. Um, you know, this is another small thing, you know, that student council is trying to do this year, reaching out to anyone we can help. Um, 
and we're certainly doing that. Lastly, uh, if you can remember this far away, Veterans Day, I think it was about a month and a half ago, two months ago, um, there was a Veterans Day video and essay contest. Uh, one of our members of Student Council, Maddie Kung, uh, made a video about Veterans Day and what it means to them. She won $500 that she decided to donate to Student Council for Greenwood Elementary. Um, and that was just, it was, an, it was an incredible decision on her part and obviously helped us and the students over at Greenwood. So thank you for listening to that long uh, update on everything that's going on. Thank you. It's a great update, Luke and Mr. Rogers. Thanks very much for that. A couple other things. The <coughs> uh, board members have at their table an invitation from the Lake Forest Foundation to add to their already $92,000 this year to date. Lake Forest Foundation uh, board members may remember as the group responsible for assisting in the creation of the innovation incubator this year and uh, benefiting students across the district. We have uh, 100 new members signed up this year with the hope of hitting 115 new members, uh, District 115. Uh, so if you have not yet donated, you could help them meet this goal. If you have uh, time, the spring luncheon is on April 22nd. That is a Wednesday, and that is uh, in really a, a yet another remarkable event in uh, the, the city of, of Lake Forest. So uh, next week, very importantly, we will be sending a link to a comprehensive climate survey. And the survey is designed to assess perceptions of the school environment, including safety, relationships, support for learning, and the environment within the school. The National School Climate Center is a national leader in school surveys and data analysis. Uh, they developed the survey. It should take approximately 20 minutes to complete and will be given to all parents and school personnel. All students in grades 3 through 12, that's Deer Path, District 67, and 115 will take an age-appropriate student version of the survey at their respective school. The feedback is very important to help us understand and improve our schools. It's important to note that all responses are anonymous. The National School Climate Center will then compile all of the results, conduct a thorough analysis, and then when the process is completed, they will send us a detailed report of our results. These results will be analyzed by the district and school leadership teams and be used to inform future planning initiatives. We will also share the results, results with you once we have received all the information. We certainly hope that all parents, students, and staff will join us in the effort to make our schools an even better place. Last time, I think we had a very low uh, parent uh, participation, somewhere along the, the lines of 65 people participated. I think we can expect a much, much higher uh, number to participate, in, in part because we had such robust attendance at our mission vision work, and the, the theme of the importance of emotional wellness came through loud and clear from that. Finally, from a superintendent's perspective, I want to share a couple things about our inclement weather that we had and the work that we're doing there. We had two cold days, which are, are very unusual for us. They happen to be the same two days that we had off last year for uh, the same reason. So the superintendents in the region have already called off next year, Wednesday and Thursday, after we get back from break. Um, we do have uh, issues that that play a significant role in whether or not we can conduct school and most particularly whether or not we will have a student standing and waiting for a bus for longer than 15 minutes because the 15 minute uh, time period is what's critical from the new uh, Nor uh, National Weather Service. They put out new guidelines on how long a wind chill will take until exposed skin freezes and we looked at the 15 minute period and looked at how many uh, of our buses will have difficulty running in this kind of weather. How often does it happen that we have students standing out there waiting? We also had last year alone in the cold snap, we had 11 different univents. Those are the, the, the air exchangers and heaters in the classrooms. 11 of those stopped functioning and that required maintenance to be in there all night and then all the next day and then the classrooms were about 50 degrees. So effectively you have 11 classrooms in which you really can't conduct instruction. Students have to go elsewhere. That creates all sorts of distractions and whatnot. The biggest issue from, from the superintendent's point of view at this point, my, uh, myself and my colleagues, 
is, is a question of what do we do in the event of an evacuation? So if we need to evacuate the school, if we have an emergency of some kind, are the sites more than a 15 minute walk away from our building? How long does it take us to get, for example, a student in a wheelchair from our site to the evacuation site? If that is 15 minutes or more, we're knowingly exposing students to frostbite conditions in a period of less than 15 minutes. We have since learned the possibility that we can actually, something that, that I had never even heard of until about a week ago, that we could potentially zone the building off and have uh, one part of the building eligible for an evacuation while we're uh, conducting research on why an alarm went off on a different part of the building. We're not sure that we're going to be able to do that. We do know at this point that other school districts do have this ability. So uh, students still need to exit their regular exit, get out of the building as quickly as possible, but then they can then hustle over to, for example, the field house where they could uh, be held until such time as the building has been cleared. Uh, for our elementary districts, the questions are even more problematic. Uh, smaller children obviously take longer time, uh, much longer time to get bundled up and then also get to an evacuation site. So we're going to be looking at whether or not uh, we can conduct uh, uh, school with uh, 25 degree or below wind chill or not. One of uh, my colleagues happened to call International Falls and spoke with them, the coldest place in the continental United States. Their guideline is 50 degrees below zero wind chill. Uh, ours has been the 15 minute mark. Um, and I think it will remain there until we can determine with, with a level of confidence that we have a place where we can have our kids uh, within 15 minutes if we need to evacuate the building. And with that, it concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you very much, Mr. Simic. Uh, and uh, that'll bring us to uh, our report uh, for the night on the strategic plan. So. Okay. Thank you, Mr. DeBose. So this is an update on our strategic plan. The strategic plan is an outgrowth of the mission and vision and milestone project we had last year. And what I want to do is provide an update on some of the qualitative and quantitative uh, uh, things that we are doing with more of a follow-up later on in the year with more of an emphasis on our quantitative, uh, the, the numbers that we have that we're driving, uh, that many of these activities are driving towards. So uh, I'm going to skip to an executive summary at the end. This was in the uh, board packet. So there's key takeaways. The first is I would point towards the freshman class technology rollout as a really key undertaking for this year. This is, in fact, for many districts, this could be the sole focus of an entire year, the only thing they're trying to do, the big initiative. We have this along with many, many others. This has been a seamless rollout for us uh, with a tremendous amount of emphasis on our adult and student support systems, the Achilles heel of every one of these rollouts. I give uh, Mr. Rogers and his team a great deal of credit for this, is the support that they have provided for our staff uh, for issues of how do I do X, Y, and Z. So not break, fix uh, issues. Coming to the yoga studio and other snappy names, they've got uh, Jimmy the Digital Ninja or whatever his name is uh, as a helper. Uh, one, of the, one of the best things that we can hear from our school personnel is, man, when we need help, it comes right away, and it's exactly what we need. These are tremendous compliments, and this is the area where all organizations, school organizations, I would say as much as anyone else, uh, stumble and fall. The other thing that's not very sexy but is very effective is the, the aggregation of our resources for our math and English students. We have 250 to 300 kids a week utilizing our math resource center. That is a one place everybody can go. There are at least two teachers in there all the time. And very importantly, there are peer tutors in there as well. So students working with other students, not just teachers working with students. In terms of 
our emotional wellness, that's one of the themes from the uh, mission and vision work, loud and clear came, make sure you don't lose sight of that initiative. And so in the superintendent's report, I talked about the comprehensive school climate inventory. That's an ongoing commitment to emotional wellness. And then also there'll be a number of metrics uh, with that in a, and action plans that, that grow out of that, a great deal of assistance that that, that uh, uh, organization provides for us. Very importantly also, we will have an author visit on uh, a, August 21st from Dr. Carol Dweck, the author of Mindset. This will be a focus of community-wide discussions. We're gonna be making uh, the rounds with APT groups and with other civic leaders and engaging our staff very broadly and very deeply. What's important about the visit is not the author visit, very frankly. It is the lead up and the follow up that makes the difference. So what's next for us? We have, as Mr. Rogers mentioned, an expansion of summer school courses, including ladder classes. These ladder classes are critically important and a very interesting thing to help kids scaffold up to classes that they might not otherwise have a chance to get to, including calculus and statistics. We have a rollout of our school climate survey, as I mentioned, our community book talks. And next year, the, the big undertaking for us is going to be the expansion of our tech rollout, including uh, grades uh, 10 through 12. So next year's ninth graders will be 10th graders, so actually be 9, 11, and 12 for the tech rollout. So that is the executive summary. This is intentionally supposed to be a brief summary with time for questions from the board as necessary, so, and as desired. So with that, that, in, that concludes the superintendent's report. There's a great deal of detail prior to that in uh, the other parts of the packet. How do you do on time? Board members, any questions or comments? Um. I just wanted to say that I'm uh, really glad to see additional summer school offerings. Okay. Thank you. I, I was very pleased we talked about it in cabinet today and a lot of a lot of work, a lot of background work went into that and that's something that I know some of, of you as parents and as uh, com and you've heard from community residents, they would like to see uh, more of this offered and so not only is are, are we expanding it but it's also we have the catalog and the offerings out earlier than our neighboring districts. Uh, any other questions, comments, or confessions from the board at this time? So, we're good? All right, so look forward to me coming back later on in the year, and we'll have uh, a more detailed look at some of the quantitative metri metrics, uh, the ACT uh, data, the persistence data, and so on. Some of those we've discussed in other, in other parts, so we'll put all those together. Um, into one presentation for you. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Simic. Uh, now we'll have time for uh, comments from any member of the public who's here. Uh, look out in the vast audience. There's one member of the public here, if he would like to make a comment. He happens to be a candidate for the board in the upcoming election. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I suspected you wouldn't want to comment, but... Uh, I had to ask, it's on the agenda here. Okay, uh, that then brings us to uh, board committee reports. Uh, board Education Committee, Mrs. Snowman. The Education Committee has not met since our last meeting. I think our next meeting is scheduled for February, but I don't have the exact date. Yeah, that sounds right. I'm pretty sure it's the first uh, Wednesday in February, so it's probably the third, thank you. Okay, uh, Finance and Operations Committee. Uh, Finance and Operations did meet, uh, met on January 9th, and thanks to my friend and colleague, Dave Schreiber, he attended uh, that meeting on my behalf. In fact, he tried to attend twice since I told him the meeting was actually Thursday the 8th instead of Friday the 9th. So, uh, so Dave, if you're out there, I owe you one, thank you. Um, no, we had a great meeting, and this is a supplemental meeting. One of the changes that we made with finance and operations at the beginning of the year is realizing that it's much harder to get new meetings on the calendar than it is anything else. So we made sure that um, 
we booked some additional dates and this is one of those meetings that that we uh, we did have the luxury to have we covered covered several things um, the first was an update from William Blair on the municipal bond market and in those rates so the public knows we're constantly looking at what what those options are. We still have some options available to us. The good news is there really isn't much upward pressure on rates at this point with things that are going on. In fact, the rates have, have slipped a little bit, which is a good thing for us at this point. What it does is give us a little uh, additional time to continue to take a look at that. And, and none of us on the board profess to be experts in that regard, which is why William Blair is involved and, and Alan and his whole team do a wonderful job in constantly staying in touch with what that looks like. So the public should know that we're, we're constantly uh, uh, involved in making sure that the, we're monitoring that closely. Um, we also had an update on an RFP for online registration, which we're going to talk about a little bit later on, so I won't go too much into that. Uh, we also did a technology overview. Um, as you know, we've made commitments in technology on behalf of, uh, of the whole school. I think we got a fantastic technology team that's working on developing not only what has worked, what we need to fix, what needs to be revised, but also start thinking more in terms of a five-year plan. Uh, and Cornelius and his team do a wonderful job keeping, up, keeping us abreast of, of, you know, all the puts and takes associated with what we're doing with the constant idea of trying to improve and getting better uh, at what we do, uh, particularly as it relates to onboarding students with new technology and understanding the needs and requirements that we're going to have to have as we continue to expand that. Uh, and then we had a quick update on... Um, you know some uh, some additional things just in terms of total operation so generally um, a great meeting that that uh, that thanks to the team and their preparation was very valuable so thanks thank you mr. powers uh, any questions or comments from other board members okay uh, that then brings us to liaison reports are there any liaison reports anything from NSSCD? Uh, yeah, quick uh, NSSCD. Uh, we, we did have a, a meeting where we did discuss the um, fee structure, and that, that's still under uh, review. Um, but it is uh, promising for districts such as our own where we really actually have a very small uh, student footprint. And with that small footprint, we carry an inordinate amount of the expense. Uh, there is talk about a fee structure uh, change, and because of this change, uh, District 112, Highland Park, is, uh, who it had previously put in a letter to re resign from the consortium, they rescinded their letter, and they're willing to stick it out for another year to see if, if and they're like us in that they do have a, uh, you know, smaller footprint, and so you know that's ongoing and we'll just see where it goes okay and correct me if I'm wrong but that the problem with that fee structure from our vantage point and from Highland Park's vantage point it sounds like uh, is that it's a combination of uh, students enrolled and and uh, property value equalized assessed value in the district it, it, it's based on fixed cost idea funds which are uh, state and federal dollars and basically give them all of our dollars and then they um, Give, give us some of that back. Uh, but as it stands now, we uh, really pay an inordinate amount of the operating expenses for the uh, uh, NSSED as a whole. Um, okay. Ted, is that the same uh, revised fee structure that we heard about previously, or have they made some movement since then? No, it's what we had discussed uh, when we had an executive uh, session about a m two months ago. Any other liaison reports? Okay, that brings us to action items. Uh, the first item on the list, uh, as uh, Mr. Powers alluded, is approval of an online uh, registration process and uh, expenses. So, Mr. Simic. Thank you, Mr. Black. And Mrs. Hermes, would you care to uh, uh, speak to this, this issue for us? Are we all set to go, or is that Mrs. Tardis? Brittany, yeah. So 
Included in your packet tonight is a memo that explains the district's process for selecting and recommending an online registration vendor. As some of you may know, our current registration process is pretty uh, inconvenient and manual intensive for both parents and staff. So our aim with the online registration system was to streamline this process and allow parents to register and pay fees all at once. So to start this project, we formed a committee of 10 members, which consisted of administration, business office officials, school secretaries, athletics, both from District 67 and 115. Uh, this committee developed an attribute list. If you could have anything and everything in an online registration system, what would you want? We used this list and developed an RFP. An RFP was sent out to 12 online registration vendors. We received five responses, and from the responses we received, we invited three companies to present to our committee. After the presentations, we narrowed it down to a company called InfoSnap. InfoSnap is used widely in Northern Illinois by many, many school districts. They have a clean and concise interface for parents. As a back-end user, you'll receive the necessary notifications. The system will allow us to manipulate data and receive the necessary reports. It's also endorsed by PowerSchool, which is our student information system. So the information that will be collected in InfoSnap will be directly uploaded to PowerSchool. There will be no manual data uh, imported into PowerSchool anymore. And we receive positive references from current and even former clients of InfoSnap. So we're recommending InfoSnap to move forward for the 15-16 school year. This will allow us to have online registration for our sophomore uh, juniors and seniors. And then 16-17, we can add on our freshmen. Freshmen are register in February, and February is right around the corner. So we're getting there. So that's what we're hoping for. Uh, I'd gladly answer any questions if you guys had any. Uh, no questions, but I am, was very, very impressed in reading the packet um, by the process that you went through and the quality of your RFP. That was your work. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Brittany, from a cost perspective, you did a nice job laying out year one, year two. Mm -hmm. any, any guess is what some of the ongoing costs may be in year three and beyond? Um, what I've heard from other districts is there is a percentage increase. Um, they had first came to us with a contract that said um, a certain percentage, and we asked that to be removed so we can negotiate it going forward. If we see no changes that would need to be in year three with the system, we don't feel like there should be a percentage increase or if there's a significant decrease in enrollment or what so. So um, I don't think there's a big increase that's expected, but it's negotiable with the company after year two. Thanks. So with this, a parent in District 67 can have the child go to the high school and not have to fill out all the same forms for their twins or their triplets or what have you. Is that correct? So it's a little complicated. District 67 and District 115 have two separate power school servers. And Cornelius, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, what we do now is we do get power school information on our students from 67 and 65 and put it into our system. I believe that we will still be able to collect this. So we'll, when you go to InfoSnap, you will, you'll see your information in there and correct it if needed but your students won't necessarily be linked because it's two separate student information systems. That's a huge time savings for parents. And, and you know, as, as, a, as a user of, of both of the districts, I can tell you that it, it is really uh, gonna be very, very well received by our parents because they can do this at their leisure. And if they need any handholding, they can come into this office then in the summertime and get help at any time, is that right? Correct. So it is going to be online, but we'll have a couple different options. So we will have a computer available for uh, anyone that needs to come in. Uh, we will also gladly send out a registration packet, paper-based, if they would still like to do that. Or we can even do it over the phone with our registrar or Natalia, our fee specialist in the business office. So many options out there for families. Any other questions? Any further comments? Thank you very much. Sounds like a great program, and I'm sure the parent community, as, as Mr. Simic said, will look forward to it immensely. 
Uh, Joy some, of the, Mesley. some of the feedback I heard from other districts is parents will be surprised what information is in the system for them that they haven't updated in probably three to four years. So we're glad to get the correct information with this new system going forward. Thank you very much, Brittany. Can I have a motion uh, regarding this action item, please? I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the online registration system with a first year cost of $12,600. Second. Thank you very much. Any further comment, board members? Could we have a roll call vote, Mrs. Barrett? Mrs. Sorensen? Aye. Mr. Powers? Aye. Mrs. Snowblin? Aye. Mr. Mormon? Aye. Mr. Markison? Mr. Black? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. That brings us to the next action item, which is approval of an agreement with the LFHS Hockey Club. Thank you, Mr. Black. Uh, this is something that I'd like to ask Mr. Rogers uh, to speak to for us. I really appreciate the work that Mr. Rogers has done uh, with the Hockey Club. Uh, it is more complex, uh, much like online registration, not necessarily terribly exciting, but uh, nonetheless very, very important for uh, these families and also for our school. So, Mr. Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Simic. Um, we do believe it's best practice to have a clear contract between the high school and the hockey club, as is done with our neighboring districts. Um, we worked with our council, Brian Crowley, uh, in putting together a contract and agreement. So, some of the important things that I want to note um, it does create a separation in terms of liability between the hockey association and the school district. In the past, there was no such agreement for Lake Forest. Secondly, um, it does release our athletic department from any possibility of code of conduct issues. It is somewhat of an unreasonable expectation for our athletic department to have to police and oversee a club organization that's not directly affiliated with the school. Um, it does create some clear guidelines and separation in terms of funding as well. In terms of our students, one of the important things that it does is it establishes and maintains um, the opportunity to get an athletic waiver. And so this is something, especially over the last year, as the waiver started to expire, a lot of our students were concerned, um, and we thought it was very important. Seeing the amount of time and energy, uh, being the parent of not of a Lake Forest hockey, but another hockey player, and knowing how much time they put into it, again, honoring the values of balance in our students' lives. So this will allow our 11th and 12th grade hockey players to be granted a phys physical education waiver. Um, and then lastly, for our students, it does also establish uh, an opportunity and a forum for recognition of our students um, through our yearbook along with other student athletes and our announcements and so on and so forth so it, it values the hard work that they do in representing our community um, and it creates I think a clear and lasting agreement between the school and the hockey organization thank you mr. Rogers uh, if I could just maybe provide some background and please fill in if I'm if I'm not accurate uh, the reason for this agreement, uh, the hockey club uh, stands apart from most of our sports activities in that it is a club organization. It is not funded by the school. It is not managed by the school. They hire their own coaches. They provide their own uh, rink time. They hire their own referees. It's not part of IHSA, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And yet we want to provide uh, the opportunity uh, for our students to play hockey uh, under the Lake Forest High School banner and provide them the recognition that other sports activities uh, can provide in terms of uh, yearbook and honors night and these kinds of things. Is that a correct summary? Absolutely. The only thing I would point out is um, there will be the Scouts Hockey Club. It will no longer be the Lake Forest High School Hockey Club, so there will be the Lake Forest Scouts, and okay. that's part of the the legal issue working this through and, and to enable it but you're absolutely right in terms of the spirit of this agreement um, and so one of the ways that we're able to guarantee the waiver is we kind of uh, did our due diligence and looked at how we could we provide this waiver for a club sport I think the main thing we looked at is there's some language through the uh, Illinois State Board of Education that talks about interscholastic sports and this certainly fits our uh, definition of interscholastic sports because our team uh, does exactly that. They play other schools, um, many of the schools in northern Illinois. So it's not as some, you may have heard of some other club teams or activities where it's not necessarily an interscholastic type of activity. So in many ways, it is uh, the type of uh, interscholastic scholastic competition that we see uh, within football 
within basketball, but as you pointed out, there is a clear delineation in terms of funding and liability, I think, that need to be established. Is, is hockey the only sport we have like that now, or, or are there others? Uh, my impression is there are is at least one other, but please don't. So know. hockey is the only sport that we have that's like that. Um, lacrosse is an interesting sport, too. Um, we also have uh, field hockey, which is not an IHSA sport, so they're kind of in between. So with the field hockey situation, and uh, there's a different type of a, of a, a setup, it actually is a school-sponsored sport, um, but it is not an IHSA sport. What about sailing? My impression was the Lake Forest Sailing Club was more attuned, more, more similar to hockey than... So I think the sailing club actually falls out of uh, even farther down the continuum in terms of where it would be and not sure that it, we would want to follow up with a similar um, agreement. That the reason being is um, the competitions that the sailing club actually is involved with, they are actually sailing against other private clubs from across the country. They're not necessarily, it's uh, not an interscholastic sport where they're playing other high schools. Also, the makeup of the sailing club involves kids from uh, multiple schools as well. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, real quick, is there, any, um, is there any member of the Lake Forest Hockey Club that is not a member of Lake Forest High School? Our understanding on the boys' side, there is not. Uh, on the girls' side, which we have not entered an agreement with them as of yet, um, you do have girls from other schools involved. But on the boys' side, it's my understanding at this point that it is strictly Lake Forest High School students. There's nothing in th with this new agreement, there's nothing saying that, I mean, they can determine what their own team is based upon their own rules and bylaws. They don't necessarily have to be Lake Forest High School students. I believe you're correct. I just had a question, Mr. Rogers. Are there any other sports or activities that would qualify for the athletic w waiver? Um, I'm thinking kids that play tennis outside of the, the school tennis team or dance or... Um, in doing our work, you know, we uh, contacted the uh, regional office. Uh, we also looked at very closely at the language, uh, trying to see if there was an interpretation, talk to our attorneys. Um, at this time, we do not see any other activities. I think there's also the idea, and there certainly are exceptional athletes, exceptional students that partake in individual activities. You might have a figure skater. Uh, you might have somebody that's um, involved with uh, equestrian events. To s but right now, uh, that would not be covered because, again, it, we're looking for interscholastic sports, and that's the thing that we're hanging on in terms of the definition which allows us to have this type of agreement. Um, otherwise, uh, we can't see how we can justify the state's requirements for giving a, a waiver. And uh, I just will go on a little bit farther. You know, one of the things that as we look to the future, um, you know, when we went through our schedule initiative, um, we found that many of our students, again, are doing exceptional things. And it might be in one of those sports activities. It might be in an outside theater group. Um, but finding ways as we start to re-envision what the school day can look like to provide opportunities for balance in students' lives. So I think as we look to the future, I think we want to create that type of balance for students whenever we have that opportunity and whatever it's merited. Other questions, board members? That seems like a healthy uh, delineation of uh, the relationship, uh, which has not heretofore existed, so I certainly uh, support it. Let's go ahead and have a roll call vote, Ms. Beck. Have we, not had, have we not had a motion yet? Uh, Can I have a motion, please? Uh, I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the agreement with the LFHS Hockey Club as presented. Second. Second. Thank you very much. Now, Mrs. Barrett. Mrs. Snowblin? Aye. Mr. Mormon? Aye. Mr. Powers? Aye. Mr. Markison? Aye. Mrs. Sorensen? Aye. Mr. Block? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, thank you uh, very much, board members. Uh, that brings us to approval of staff compensation. Mr. Simic? Thank you, Mr. Black. Uh, this is something that we have discussed in our executive sessions, and I recommend its approval as presented. Thank you very much. I think there has been, uh, as you allude, considerable discussion of this. Any questions, board, member on, board members, on this issue? Hearing none, uh, do I have a motion, please? 
I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the staff comp compensation as uh, presented. Second. Thank you very much, Mrs. Barrett. A roll call. Mr. Powers. Aye. Mrs. Sorensen. Aye. Mr. Markison. Aye. Mrs. Snowblin. Aye. Mr. Mormon. Aye. Mr. Block. Aye. The motion passes. Thank you very much, fellow board members, uh, which brings us to our last action item, approval of the Human Resources Report. I recommend approving the Human Resources Report as presented. Board members, any questions? Then I'll entertain a motion. I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the Human Resources Report as presented. Thank you very much. Roll call, Ms. Barrett. Mr. Mormon. Aye. Mrs. Snowblin. Aye. Mr. Markison. Aye. Mr. Powers. Aye. Mrs. Sorensen. Aye. Mr. Block. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. That brings us to. Approval of uh, disbursements and payrolls and financial statements. Uh, for December 2014, approval of towel service contract, recognition of uh, the code gift, minutes of the meeting of the regular meeting of December 9th, 2014, minutes of an executive session on December 9th, 2014, and the routine disposal of audio recordings. Any item can be removed uh, from the consent agenda if a board member so desires. So, uh, are there any concerns about any consent agenda items from a board member? I don't request removing an item, but when there is a gift, I think it might be nice to acknowledge it in a little bit more public way if it could just be read out. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, number one. And I, I was personally going to acknowledge this one as it comes from a, a longstanding and well-admired teacher that many of us know. So uh, maybe we'll do that after the, uh, after the approval. Uh, are there any comments or questions uh, other than wanting to remove an item from board members? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Thank you very much, Ms. Barrett. Mr. Powers? Aye. Mr. Markison? Aye. Mrs. Sorensen? Aye. Mrs. Snowblin? Aye. Mr. Powers? Aye again. Thank you. Mr. Black? <laughs> Aye. I'm on some medication. That's why I'm having problems remembering to ask for uh, motions and what have you. Uh, maybe you have a similar excuse, Ms. Barrett. Mr. Mormon. Aye. Motion passes. <laughs> it's the Chicago way, right? <laughs> or I could say the Louisiana way in my case. And I didn't find that remotely funny. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the public record. Uh, Okay, two issues. Uh, Mike, would you like to, Ms. Simic, would you like to make some comments about the code gift to put it in its appropriate perspective? Yeah, I'd be very happy to. Uh, Mr. Black, you mentioned uh, one of our longstanding and very beloved teachers, Mr. Dan Code, has been kind enough to donate an open water, open water kayak to the district, and uh, he receives no services or remuneration uh, for this donation. Uh, the district has, uh, makes no indication of the fair market value for the donated uh, item. Uh, they are tax deductible by law, um, but in, in this case, uh, Mr. Code um, is, has donated a, a kayak uh, from his family to our school to benefit our outdoor education program. And uh, Mr. Moorhead, Mr. Uh, Werner, and Mr. Landvik uh, use these kayaks a great deal and, and very much appreciate that donation. And speaking uh, for the rest of the board, uh, we appreciate uh, it as well, and we appreciate Mr. Code's longstanding and, and wonderful service to the district. So, uh, On a, uh, another matter related to the consent agenda, you, some of you might remember there was considerable discussion at the last meeting about whether there were indeed regulations about what went into consent agenda as opposed to in action items. And Mr. Simic, you've done some investigation into that, so if you could 
inform us as to what you found out. And uh, working from uh, my likewise sketchy memory, I'll do what I can on that account. Uh, we spoke with our district attorneys on what can, what may and may not be included in the consent agenda. There are no uh, state laws that govern what uh, should be on a consent agenda or not is very much up to the discretion of the, uh, the the board and in this case the initial placement of what is on the consent agenda is something that is done uh, by the uh, by the board president uh, typically in conjunction with the board vice president uh, in discussion with the superintendent and then at the time of the meeting any one of the items can be removed from the consent agenda uh, by any board member at, um, at, at their request. Uh, they do uh, urge uh, a, pr a practice that we currently uh, utilize in the district, which is don't just uh, say, may have approval for the consent agenda, so moved, and then take a vote. They recommend uh, itemizing, reading down the list of items within the consent agenda uh, in detail so that it is clear at the time of the motion uh, what is uh, being proposed and so our practices are consistent with uh, with our attorneys recommendations and uh, our, our past practices uh, we can continue uh, in, in uh, to continue to utilize as we have thank you very much any questions uh, board members again uh, it's my understanding based on our conversation uh, while there aren't any regulations uh, the, the intent, and I can tell you my intent, in, uh, my intent as board president, uh, is to uh, limit items on a cons consent agenda to those things which are not controversial, not high dollar amounts that would not require, uh, you know, uh, any significant amount of discussion or consideration. So, yeah, that's another thing that our attorney suggested: is things that are perfunctory in nature, that are routine, that are not controversial not intended to be used uh, to to bury something in in any way uh, things that will not require uh, discussion uh, of, of any extent at all are things that are eligible typically for consent agendas across the state miss Nova not to belabor the point but in my almost eight years on the board I don't recall there ever being any um, concern that we were trying to um, to conceal anything by putting it on the consent agenda and those items are always publicly available if anyone does have any questions or concerns about them thank you obviously I agree I thought you were trying to tell me something you were moving your mouse there uh, okay we're getting near the end here we had two FOIA requests uh, during the month and in terms of announcements, uh, uh, this coming Friday, January 16th, uh, is uh, faculty work day, so there won't be any student attendance. Uh, Monday, January 19th, uh, there is also no school, uh, as it is Martin Luther King Day. Wednesday, January 28th, is a late start day. Uh, classes, school will start at 9.30 a.m. Tuesday, February 10th, uh, is our next a regular Board of Education meeting at 7 p.m. here in the West Campus boardroom. Any other items that a board member would like to bring to the attention of the public? Hearing not, uh, hearing none, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Thank you very much. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>